is up YouTube, it's Tom from Tech Time. Here at Tech Time, I bring you all your tech, all the time. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with my weekly content. Today I have my full review of the new mobile G1. This is a $99 smartphone, not on sale. This is the starting price, the only price, 99 bucks. And at 99 bucks, it really offers a lot kind of falls short in some areas but you got to relate it to the price tag it's 99 dollars there's not too much on the market at 99 dollars that offers some of the specs that this offers in my personal opinion now on this channel i mostly focus on flagship phones so it was hard for me to adjust to using a 99 dollar phone so I didn't use it as my full-time main phone. I used it as a secondary phone, but I did use it at work. I had my T-Mobile SIM card in it. And here's what I figured out about it. So starting off with the design and some of the specs, this thing comes with a 5.7 inch HD plus display. It's a resolution of 1440 by 720. So it's pretty much a 720 display, 18 by nine aspect ratio, which is what all the new smartphones are having nowadays, the 18 by nine aspect ratio. This has a MediaTek 1.3 gigahertz quad core processor. Not the fastest, but 99 bucks again. You have 16 gigabytes of onboard storage, which is small. Then you also have one gigabyte of RAM. Now that's the biggest downfall I feel like on this phone is the RAM. If it just had two gigabytes of onboard storage, then you'd be a little bit better. You also get a micro SD card so you can upgrade some of the storage if you need, you know, for pictures and things like that. So this is LTE 4G. So you get everything like that. It's running Android Oreo 8.1. So that's just some of the basic specs on this thing. This isn't, this is the actual Go edition. So it's like a, like a half built version. It's kind of like a light version of Android Oreo. So it's good for what it has. So let's take a look at what the phone looks like that's a big thick phone because it also comes with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery and the battery life on this thing is just out of this world best battery life I've ever used on a phone hands down so the back of it nothing special it's just kind of like a plasticky material you get your new branding you get a fingerprint sensor your camera on the back which isn't the best it's an 8 megapixel you get a 5 megapixel on the front you get a back firing speaker which actually is is pretty good it did come with a glass screen detector in the box Let's see if we can see it it's on right now and it also came with this clear case so for 99 bucks you're getting a complete package of everything you need to get this phone up and running so that's with the case on little clear case does the trick you got micro b micro usb charging Headphone jack, which actually came in handy at work for me quite a few times. And then you get a microphone down the bottom, and that's it. You have a head air speaker up at the top, but it's not a dual speaker. Let's get into it. So this is what it looks like. You get the screen is actually not too bad on this thing, really at all. The display for being what it is, a $99 phone, isn't all that bad. So let's take a look at one of my latest videos on the Aki wireless charger. You can hear it. Full screen. We just spun What's it. What's up guys? It's Tom from Tech Time and I'm back with another video. Fit Today to zoom right there. About an and that is it. Wireless charger. This so is it's not that bad. 5 watt wireless charger. It's the LC slash C6 model. You can hear the back speaker, and even holding it doesn't cover it up that much. So even holding it, you don't really cover up that much of the speaker, and it actually gives off decent sound for a rear firing speaker. The layout of it, nothing fancy. Android Oreo, you know, you can switch it to dark themes and things like that. I kept the basic um, wallpaper. So you get your apps right here, basic apps. I added social media apps my emails, things like that, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube Studio, YouTube. So this is pretty much what people are going to be using, in my opinion, with a $99 phone. They're going to be checking their email, checking their Facebooks, Instagram, Twitter, things like that. You know, not really going hugely in-depth. They're not going to be doing mobile gaming and things like that with this. I wouldn't assume, and if you are trying to, you're not going to have the best, you know, results with it. It's not a gaming phone. 
the camera. Now, it's nothing special, but you can get a decent photo out of it. You know, so video is shaky. It's not the best. Audio recording isn't the best on it. So I wouldn't use the camera as anything really, you know, besides just having something on you to take some quick snapshots. You're going to want to make sure that whatever you're shooting is slow moving because if not, you will get blur. This, it's just, you know, it's a pretty outdated camera sensor in it and it is what it is. You're not going to get the best, but you do get 1080p video recording if you need it. Like I said, it is shaky. The stabilization, I don't think has any. The battery life, like I talked about, is amazing. 5,000 milliamp hour battery. It's just remarkable. I've gotten two, three days listening to music, listening to videos over two days, almost every single time. It's pretty crazy. Right now it's about to die. It's at I don't know, 5%, but it's been sitting. I've only used it a couple times at the house. I've had my T-Mobile SIM in it the couple weeks that I did use it, one of my T-Mobile SIMs, and I got great service. Call quality was great. Anyone I talked to said I sounded great, no issues. I had no drop service anywhere that I would have service with my other phones. Everything was great. I was running my Google Pixel 3 XL right alongside this thing, and the service was right there. Now, I did get slower download speeds from... Uh, LTE, but they were definitely capable and they weren't too slow. I've had, you know, 40, 50 megabytes per second download and upload depending on where I was. I wasn't really worried about that, just mostly download, but I was able to do whatever I needed to do. The software on this is Android Oreo Go. It's a light version. So there's going to be some apps that aren't compatible and sometimes you'll load up an app, like sometimes I'll load up YouTube and it will say it needs an update, but the update isn't compatible. But most of the time it works, like right now, see what happens, it works, no problem. So you scroll through, little Joe Rogan clips. Mr. Freeze, that's right. But they got the Ben app. And it loads up fairly quick, it really does. Now you are gonna wanna close out your apps, if not it will shut them off most of the time anyways. You know, we can jump into Instagram, it takes a second to load, but it does load up. And there you go. You can scroll through. A one gigabyte of RAM and a MediaTek processor. This thing, you know, does the trick. It's a hundred dollars. Hundred dollars doesn't get you much nowadays, especially in the smartphone world. So the software is okay. Like I said, it's a little bit of a light version. So we're losing some power right now because the battery is dead. So I'm going to charge this up again quick, get us some life, and I'll be back at it. What's up? I'm back. So we're just going to rock it out. Real life, <laughs> charging cables in it. You know, I don't have time to let this thing charge up. I have a busy life. So we're going to get going because that is one of the downfalls is it does take a long time to charge this phone. There was no quick charge or anything like that. You get standard micro USB charging. And it takes a while. It's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, so it takes a bit. But once you get battery life and you get this thing fully charged, this, you can go days without having to worry about touching a charger on this thing. It is that good with battery life. It's not having a draining system on it. It's not having a crazy high resolution screen or anything like that. So it doesn't drain the battery quick at all. Battery life is superb on this phone. So getting back into the software. The software, like I said, it's, it's just Android Oreo Go. It's a light version, so you're not going to have all the app access that you need, but you get most of the things you need. You get Maps Go, Google Assistant Go, so they're kind of like slimmed down versions. So you're not having as much bloat on this phone to keep it slow. The camera, we talked about briefly, is nothing to write home about. It is what you would expect for a $100 smartphone. 8 megapixel, 5 megapixel front camera, nothing, nothing crazy. You're not going to win any awards. It's... Get, can get you by, you can get a shot, and that's about it. The camera's not going to be anything incredible. The best thing on this is the battery life for sure. The display's nice. The speaker sounds good. You have a fingerprint sensor on this, which you wouldn't expect at $100. So check out the fingerprint sensor. For some reason, it's not working. Boom. When the screen's off not detecting it. So this is probably like a 7 out of 10 
seven out of ten times you're going to have the fingerprint sensor work and there's a, sometimes it just doesn't work. I notice when your hands get moist and things like that, it doesn't work. But my Google Pixel 3 XL has one of the worst fingerprint sensors that I've ever used besides the Google Pixel 2 on a you know recent flagship phone. So right now, turn it on. There it goes. So putting it on and there it goes. So when it works, it works fairly quick. The other thing that kind of gets to me is the power and the volume button on the same side, but the power is lower than it. I'm used to it being the opposite on most phones, the power button being up here and the volume being lower if they're on one side. So that took a little getting used to, but when you get used to it, it's fine. There's no face unlock or anything like that with this phone, but it's 99 bucks. So overall, I think it's a good buy at 100 bucks. Let me know down in the comments below what do you guys think is a better buy at 100 bucks. Yeah, you can maybe get a couple year old flagship for 100 bucks, maybe like an S5 or something like that that might compete with this, but it's gonna be running outdated software. This is almost up to date. You're one step behind it, uh, Pi, but it is, like I said, a Go version. So it's gonna be the light version of it. You're not getting the full OS. But for $100, you know, it keeps coming back to that. I know I've said it a million times, but let's look on Amazon for $100 phones. You get 130 bucks, 110 bucks for a Speed phone. Never heard of it. They call it a Note 9. It's definitely far from the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. You know, you get a $60 phone. There's not too many options. Motorola, maybe the uh, E5, maybe you might be able to get for 100 bucks or the E4. That might be some competition for this, but even then it might be, you might be pushing upwards of 140 bucks. There's not too many options at 100 bucks. Most of them are over 100. This one's 99 and it does. It actually has a pretty decent amount of specs for that. I just really wish it had two gigabytes of RAM. That could really, you know, speed things up, but it doesn't. But you, could, you can get your basic tasks done going to be a little slower, but if you're using a $100 phone, you're probably used to it. You know, most people aren't going to come from an iPhone 10 or a Samsung Galaxy Note 9 and jump onto a $100 phone unless, you know, things go real drastically <laughs> wrong in your life and you and you just, you know, things go bad. All the time. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with our weekly content. Today we have a screen protector for the iPhone 10R. It's that's it guys, 100 bucks. Let me know in the comments what you think. And until the next time, I'll catch you later. Peace.